So today we're going to have a look at the Air Arms S510 TDR takedown rifle, which is in this very discreet uh, injection molded plastic security case. And inside, there you have everything you need for day shooting. As you can see, it's compact, everything is in there that you need. Not only is the case robust, so that you can check it in the back of your car, along with the rest of your gear and equipment, and it's not going to get damaged, but it's also discreet, so if you're going shooting and you want to keep that private, this is a great way of transporting your rifle and all your equipment without letting on what you're doing. Now, as you can see, everything is in here in the case. The rifle is in two sections, the front end with the action and the pistol grip, and the rear end with the butt. There's also storage place for pellets, this little bag with a filler adapter and Allen keys, and also the end plug uh, for your barrel if you want to take off your moderator if you're not concerned about sound or you're in a really confined space and you don't want that extra length. Now the rifle itself, when it's been fully assembled, is 1.06 metres and weighs in about 2.8 kilos. So it's quite a lightweight rifle, uh, but still has that standard rifle dimensions. If you're shooting an Ultimate Sporter, which is the same action, and that weighs in about 3.6 kilos, just to give you an idea. But this is significantly lighter. It comes together very easily. You take the front end and the back end. As you can see here, there's three pins on the butt plate and there's three receiving holes on the action. Slot them together. Turn the null grip at the back, which pulls the butt assembly into the action, and the rifle is now assembled and ready to go. Now, the rifle won't fire unless the butt plate has been fully fitted into the action, so it's pretty straightforward and simple to do. And what I'm going to do here is there is an accessory rail on the bottom of the rifle. I'm just going to fit this bipod. And there we have it. Nice, compact and lightweight. It's a great rifle for all hunting scenarios in standard version, sub 12 foot pound version. There's 40 shots in both 177 and 22. If you go to the higher power version, which is 20 foot pounds in 177 and 29 foot pounds in 22, then the shot capacity comes down to 15, which actually for a day's rabbit shooting is, is probably about right. Uh, but for most of us, uh, 40 shots is a, is a pretty good day out in the field. Now looking at the features and functionality, starting from the back, is an adjustable butt pad. Uh, I'm a great believer in getting a rifle to fit you as closely as possible uh, and using every plane of adjustment uh, to your advantage. The quicker and more intuitively the rifle comes to the shoulder, the more likely it is your eye is going to be aligned behind the scope and you can acquire that target in the, in the sight picture much easily. Uh, so adjustable butt pad, nice soft touch cheek piece underneath which can store two uh, of the 10 shot air arms magazines. Each of those magazines is self indexing, uh, 10 shot magazines, two in the stock and then one in the rifle itself gives you uh, 30 shots without having to fiddle around uh, and reloading. So as you come into the action itself, as you can see it's air arms S510 side lever action which is one of my favourites. It's fast indexing, it's very positive. You can feel the lever in the dark, so even if you're in a barn or you're hunting with night vision, then it's very intuitive to be able to use. It's also very fast cycling. I've never had any misfeeds uh, with an air arms magazine or side lever action before, so it's one of my preferred types of action for hunting. And on top of this, we have an 11 millimeter dovetail scope rail. To that, I've fitted a Hawk Air Max 4 to 12 by 40 adjustable objective scope, which I think is the ideal scope for this package. Uh, the right level of magnification. It's also got a TMX reticle which allows me to pinpoint my aim points and my hold off points. Underneath that we have a, a walnut stock. Now this has a pistol grip which I'm, I'm a pretty big fan of. It allows you a lot of versatility in terms of how you grab the rifle, in terms of how you hold the rifle, your hand position can change. You're not locked in by a thumb hole or by an over target style stock. I think the more variation you have on grip and the more closely fitting your butt, the better and more instinctively you'll shoot. So as you move forward from there, we have a fully adjustable match grade trigger with a built in safety. Now, of course, it only blocks the trigger. The only way to be entirely safe is to make sure you never point the rifle at anything you don't want to shoot at, and you keep it pointing in a safe distance at all times. So safety is really down to you, but it's always good to have these barriers put in place to keep us as safe as possible. We've already seen the accessory rail in the fore end, which you can fit a stud, uh, all manner of different accessories. Now, here, I, I tend to use a bipod for a rifle this small. Behind that, we have a built-in manometer to let you know just how much air you have left in the cylinder. Moving forward, there's a 395 millimeter Lothar Walther match grade barrel. One of the things that Air Arms always do is put really good quality barrels on their rifles. Not only is the action consistent, but also the barrel will put the pellet where you want it. So it's absolutely vital to make sure that no um, expense is spared there. That barrel is shrouded, which I think gives it a really nice touch, nice feel, that really solid, rugged look about it. And then the Air Arms silencer on the end there. Now this can be removed, as we've said before, and replaced with a plug at the end, but this really does bring the sound down to almost inaudible levels. So there you have it. Lightweight, 
compact, maneuverable, and very well put together. One of the things you get with Air Arms rifles is an incredible level of engineering and quality. The finish on these rifles really is second to none. Added to that, uh, the internal workings and mechanisms you get from over 30 years of making precision air rifles means that the pellets that you fire from this rifle are going to go where you want them consistently. So with that in mind, we're going to take this bad boy out and have a look at how she performs on the range. So here we are at the range again with the Air Arms S510 TDR. First things first, go over the equipment I'm using. Obviously we've got the Air Arms F510 itself fitted with a Hawk 4-12x40 Air Max scope. We're going to start by putting a few shots through it just to get it settled down, uh, get the action cycling, put a few pellets through the barrel. From then, we're going to use the Scan Crony to measure the velocity and the muzzle energy over the full charge of the rifle to give us a shot string. We've got some HFT practice targets. At the end, we're going to do a 10-shot magazine all the way through uh, and see what group we can secure at 30 yards. Uh, I'll be using Air Arms Diablo 2-2 pellets, 16 grains. And of course, I've got a pen and paper to note down all the velocities uh, and range data. We need to get the rifle charged up and get the magazines loaded. And the Air Arms S510 TDR runs off 190 bar fill pressure, uh, which is easily topped up through this quick release valve at the end of the cylinder. Loading the magazines on the Air Arms S510 TDR is very straightforward. It uses a standard 10-shot rotary indexing magazine that's familiar to all Air Arms users. You open up this cocking lever, pull out the magazine, drop in the pellets and rotate the cylinder. Simply slide the magazine back into the action, throw the cocking lever forward, the rifle is now loaded and ready to fire. So we fired 30, 40 shots through the barrel. I'm very happy that it's grouping consistently, so hopefully the action's all settled down now. Uh, these rifles shoot pretty well out of the box. I know there's a train of thought that says you need to lead in a barrel, but I've just had at 30 yards down there a group that'll fit inside a five pence piece. So I'm very happy that she's shooting consistently. Now I'm gonna run her through the chronograph and see what the shot string delivers, You know what the sweet spot uh, for this particular rifle is. It's a long and laborious task, but here goes. So I have to say that was pretty remarkable. Air Arms claim 40 shots per charge, but I've just run a 100 shot string through the TDR, firing off three shots just to get the barrel settled down, get the, uh, the hammer active. Shot number one was 552 feet per second, and shot number 80 was 550 feet per second. Now the variance across all 80 shots uh, is 17 feet per second, so the highest only had one at 567. That's a 2.9% variance across 80 shots. Within that, as you'll see from the graph, there are little sweet spots here and there. So for the first 30 shots, it was around 555 to 557. The next 30 shots in the early 560s, late 550s. But overall, I think Air Arms have pretty much undersold themselves here. I'm not suggesting that you need to use all 80 shots, but it's great to know that if you do have a full day out in the field, that you can expect to have more than the 40 shots that have been laid out by the manufacturer. Not entirely sure why it's so different, but it's a great thing to have uh, in your arsenal. So now that we know we've got plenty of capacity uh, and there's good shot to shot consistency within that capacity, now let's see how it actually performs out there on the range and see if we can get some uh, nice tight groups out at 30 meters. So I've kept the magazines loaded and I'm gonna do four 10 shot groups. Now there's a little bit of breeze in the air, but these are pretty average wind conditions, I'd say for hunting in the field. So it'll give you an idea as to not only the consistency of group, but also how the pellets handle the wind. So there we have it, you know, that's some pretty good groups. Four 10 shot groups fired back to back, uh, each at uh, different targets. First 10 shot group here, second, third and fourth. And as I say, it's not particularly windy. There's a little bit of breeze uh, that would have added to some of this variance. But if you imagine that each of these squares here is 25 millimeters or you know, close to an inch, none of these groups have gone outside edge to edge an inch across. So that's some pretty consistent shooting there. And of course that's with me on a bipod with a back end floating in my hand. So if you're on something a little bit more stable, a little bit more consistent, then imagine these are tightened up by another 10 to 15 mil. But that's not how we shoot in the field. 
We shoot off bipods, we lean on trees, we shoot off sticks. Uh, so this thing is a fair representation of the accuracy uh, that you get out of this rifle in normal field conditions, in normal wind. I think for such a small, compact, maneuverable and lightweight package, this is some pretty insane performance. So, uh, so well done to Air Arms. So there we have it, the Air Arms S510 TDR Sporter Rifle. It's pretty much everything it professes to be. Lightweight, maneuverable, accurate, and comes in a discreet hard case. But also, it's not a gimmick. It's not a rifle that you should have in addition to a sporter rifle. The TDR S510 could be used as your everyday go-to hunting rifle. All of the functions and features you'd expect from an air rifle from air arms, uh, the quality of manufacturing, the quality of finish, the innovation, things like the 10-shot rotary magazine, which we're all pretty familiar with, side lever action, easy to handle in the dark and cold weather, a good all-round package that performs well in the field.